Daily life after coronavirus. If you're watching this video, it means you made it through a horrendous death defying moment in human history. The aftermath of the coronavirus leaves people vulnerable. Some remain optimistic and find the strength to recover. Others just leave it all to fate. But one thing's for sure life will never be the same again. Humans who think superior and in control are changing. You can look at it as being under the influence of coronavirus effect. Our values, our habits, our homes, and our lives are changing. If you're one of the many lives affected by the coronavirus, please tell us about it by writing in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit subscribe and notification bell for more life-changing videos. We know the devastation of coronavirus brought to the world's industry. Some lost their jobs because many businesses were not expected to reopen. It would change the spatial structure of an organization if people would be given the option to work from home. It would be common to find office arrangement slotted somewhere in the corner of the living room or under the stairs. Living in a house rather than condominium apartment would be preferable to people after coronavirus ends. Now that health and hygiene would be a high priority, it is necessary to reduce contact with everything that is used in high-rise buildings, such as elevator, elevator buttons, door handles, surfaces, and above all, neighbors. Since story buildings are designed to hold as many people as possible, in one place. Urbanization would step back as people tried to relocate to small villages and city suburbs. After an imposed self-isolation on different floors above the ground, often without a large window or balcony, we would all desperately want to have a house. It doesn't matter if it's tiny or mobile homes, as long as it has a courtyard or space where you can enjoy drinking coffee in the morning. Safety has been the primary function of the house throughout time. Initially, it served as a hiding place from bad weather, predatory animals, or even from an enemy. Today, people need a house that can effectively provide social distance and isolation. More than an escape from routine and urban chaos, the house now offers a safe retreat from viruses and infections. Also, because we experience people hoarding due to pandemic, people are thinking about how to live a more sustainable life. Sustainability will continue to be a trend globally. As our grandparents always told us, gardening is a way of life. It is not only calming, it is healing. And the interaction with a living plant is good for our health. Some ancient stories say that talking to a plant makes it grow and bear fruits or flowers faster. It used to be trendy to start small gardens near homes or on balconies, but now it will be a booming necessity. If you agree that you can grow food, our major necessity of life at home, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe. Growing what you eat is pleasant and gives you some freedom from daily worries and strife, particularly during self-isolation. It would be satisfying relief to reduce people's dependence on a wage to be able to live and focus more on things that matter most like family and relationships within the community. The pandemic has given organic and sustainable foods a considerable surge in demand. According to Ecovia Intelligence, a research company focusing on organic products, that in France, some organic food shops are experiencing a high increase in sales of over 40%. In addition to making a sustainable living by producing food, indoor gardens can provide oxygen. It could open a potential area to explore in the interior design aspect. It would be worth it to try. Plus, you can have a fresh tomato ready when you need it. We have seen the number of fatalities of coronavirus. The infections continue to grow exponentially in the US and Europe. Despite this, people want to have a semblance of normalcy. However, restrictive public health measures would still be part of our daily life to keep the pandemic from worsening. 
Curfews and stay-at-home schedules will be strictly imposed, which were first issued in Italy and then in rapid succession in most other countries around the world. With entire populations ordered to stay home, schools, offices, and factories limited their activities. Road traffic dwindled to a minimum and airlines reduced scheduled flights by 60 to 95 percent. Meaning, tourism also be affected and other related businesses will also take a beating. But it's not all negative. While coronavirus has inflicted substantial economic and social shocks, we can also associate some positive consequences like reduction in air pollution and gas emissions. A dramatic improvement in the quality of air is evident as people take photos of the blue sky of major city lines. This environmental improvement is largely because of the reduction in factory and road traffic emissions of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and other related gases that destroy the ozone layer. Global air traffic also dropped by 60%, giving hope to mankind that the world can be green again and mitigate impending climate change. So long as the coronavirus crisis keeps economic activities reduced, emissions will remain relatively low. However, it would be short-sighted to conclude if this is going to be a long-term environmental improvement as emissions will most likely rise to previous levels when economic activity picks up again once everything goes back to the way it used to be. But if the crisis continues, many will be forced to abandon existing sustainable production to generate income quickly in domestic markets, potentially resulting in further poverty and over-exploitation of natural resources and ecosystems. All these scenarios are happening all at once right before our very eyes. Attention must be given to the threats on the environment and natural resource based on the damage of the coronavirus pandemic and consequential social and economic impacts. The question is, what can we do differently? As the world calls out for action, we want a transformed society building on mutual aid and generosity and not be sidetracked and dissent into barbarism nor capitalism. Ultimately, our mindset still plays a major role as we continue to live our daily lives after coronavirus pandemic ends. Imagine holding a flashlight. Where is your flashlight pointing at? Wherever it is, you can see that the center of the beam is the brightest. The further away you point from the center, the dimmer it becomes. But what does it have to do with your life? This is similar to where we put focus in our lives. The thing we pay most attention to becomes what matters the most for us. So be careful where you will point your flashlight at. That thing or person can seem so important and critical that we think our happiness depends on it and nothing else matters. If the outcome turns out to go out of our control, we might feel overwhelmed, hopeless, and desperate. In the past few months, we pointed our flashlights at something external, something that was almost completely out of our control. It dictates our mood and emotion like fear, uncertainty, and worries. After the nightmare ends, people need to refocus. We need to point our flashlight towards ourselves so we can take care of ourselves and the people we love. Don't forget to wash your hands and stay at home. Let's create a new worthy life and make our only planet a better place to live in.